All right, what we got on the bench today is a 6F35 out of a 2013 Ford Fusion. I'm going to do a, a highlight video on. I had to uh, tear this unit down for uh, warranty purposes. But the problem with this was uh, you put a car in drive, uh, it would have a really bad delay. Uh, sometimes it would race up, bang into gear. Uh, immediately going to fail safe with the 751 code, uh, which is uh, shift, I believe it was shift solenoid A stuck off. It's a mechanical code, it's not a hydraulic code. So I did find a problem, which I'm going to share with you guys. And um, one of the main things uh, uh, about these units, which I actually like, is the, the clutches, like for instance, the one, two, three, four clutch, is on in first, second, third, and fourth. So the, the names of the clutches is is when they're on, the two, six, the four, five, six, you know, uh, we're used to dealing with your your forward clutch or your direct clutch, the overrun clutch, you know, and when you're dealing with the four speed transmission, the direct clutch is third. When you're dealing with the five speed transmission, the direct clutch is fourth. But this is nice and simple. Um, you know, like I said, this had a problem in first gear. You put it in drive. So I immediately, when I tore it down, I immediately went to the one, two, three, four clutch and I, I found the problem. So that's uh, that's the good thing uh, that I like about these uh, these six-speed units with the uh, the name of the, uh, uh, the frictions. Uh, you know, what their name is is when they're on. So even a three, five reverse, you know, self-explanatory, third, fifth, and reverse. So what I'll do is I'll get a little closer and uh, we'll identify the clutch packs, where they are. I want to show you a couple of things on the cases. And this unit is pretty much the same as, very similar to a 6040. And the reason why I say that is because um, we actually just got the okay to overhaul this. So I ordered from my supplier um, a banner kit because I'm changing all the frictions. Uh, the old, which is the overhaul kit and the frictions, and separate is a piston kit. And when I got some of the pistons that are, are coming in, <coughs> this is a Ford, and this is what they sent me, uh, AC Delco, which is, this would be for a 6040. So the unit is very, very similar, but there are some differences. Uh, the one thing that I am going to do, because as you know, a common problem with these six speeds is the 3.5 down here. I don't have this apart yet, but the 3.5 reverse wave steel is the one that breaks and, and tears the unit up. So I'm changing that even though it's in good shape just because, you know, we do have to warranty this thing. And it's really not that bad to do anyway. Um, that is different. Um, I had asked them if it was the same as the 6040, but he says, no, it's a different part number. So that, that is different, but uh, most of the pistons, you know, are the same as the 6040. So it does have its similarities and does have its differences as well. Uh, so I guess I'll get a little closer on the bench and we can um, go over a couple things on this. I uh, apologize, I couldn't tear this down, but this thing landed on my bench at about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. It's been absolutely crazy busy here. And uh, I had to get the thing down and I had to get the estimate done uh, because the guy, I don't believe, um, I don't know if they're giving him a rental, I'm not really sure, but he calls here a lot, wants to know what's going on with this thing. So, but there should be plenty more to do, you know, plenty more of these units uh, to come. Uh, so let me get a little closer, and we'll start going over this, um, you know, kind of one section at a time, and, and I have the cases over here cleaned already, and we can uh, go over what's with that as well. All right, so I'll get a little closer, I'll be right back. All right, so first, let me show you what I found uh, with the unit, the reason why uh, it has this problem. Okay, this actually is the, the big heavy snap right here, and this actually is the one, two, three, four clutch. I mean, this thing, I gotta change the steel, these clutches are bad. And this is at the very, very top. When you split the case is apart, this is the first clutch you come to, you know, once you remove the chains and stuff like that. So this is the one, two, three, four clutch. And this is the um, uh, the piston, 
for that, and this is the piston for the low reverse. So again, we're having a problem in first gear. First thing I did was I went to this, I took this apart, and I also want to show you guys a tool that I made to get these things apart. Right, let me get the piston out here. Okay, when I took this apart, I found this little piece of rubber. So we know right away where that came from. Okay, here is the clutch piston for the one, two, three, four clutch, and there's a nice section right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a section missing, which is what I just showed you, that little piece of rubber. So that there is my problem right there. That's why it was doing this. You know, sometimes maybe the clutches wear down. Uh, the piston comes up too high, and then when it returns, it tears. So uh, that is the problem uh, of why we're producing the 751 code and why this thing really didn't move that great. You know, sometimes you'd have this thing in drive, you're waiting, you're waiting, you give it gas, and boom, it slams in a gear, immediately goes into fail safe. Okay, so that is the one, two, three, four clutch. Okay, then. So with the cases split apart, you know, we take the bell housing off. You know, let me just grab the bell. Here's the bell housing. With the bell housing off, just like on the 1640, you're going to have, you're gonna have your pump. Your pump here uh, attached uh, to, the, to the bell housing. And of course, you're going to have your filter. And this is, uh, this is your filter. This uh, filter actually, uh, my supplier didn't, well, my supplier did have one, uh, but it was about three days out, and I want to try to get this thing done. But uh, from Ford, this uh, filter uh, lists for about $72, and uh, my cost is about uh, 55 And uh, the other filter for my supplier uh, was um, probably about uh, $10, $10 less, but I really don't want to wait for three days and we're getting the, uh, the figure you know, that we did the estimate for, so which is fine. So your pump is gonna get bolted to here, your filter lays in here, so you gotta put both of those on together. And your final drive, this is your final drive ring gear, which is removable by a snap ring. And your final drive um, is gonna go here. And then, just like, any, just like the other one, you have your um, I guess they call this a baffle, maybe, you know, keeps the oil in place. This is going to bolt here, like this. Okay, so this is the uh, bell housing. Let me just turn my light back on. Okay, so with the case is split apart, Chain and sprockets here. And you just gotta watch where your bearings and washers go. And you have a, a washer here that goes on the chain sprocket. Alright, that's gonna go here. Okay, so then, then we got the one, two, three, four clutch, and then uh, we have the uh, low reverse piston and the one, two, three, four piston. So this is in the middle, and you have your feed tubes that come in through the valve body area. Okay, and then you have your low reverse clutch. Uh, this is all in the case here. All right, so this is your low reverse. And again, just self-explanatory, it's on low and on reverse. When I mean low, I looked at an application chart, I believe it's uh, low like for like engine braking and, and manual low. 
And here is your sprig. Okay. And then underneath that, so we'll put this this way. This is your 2-6 clutch. Okay, that's all the way at the bottom of the case. And the piston, this piston actually sits in the case. And this is gonna, you know, come off. So this is the piston that's gonna be changed. And, and then this goes together just like that. And it's pretty simple to get the snap ring in and it shouldn't be an issue because, you know, to hold the piston uh, retainer down. Okay, in this drum here, you have the shaft that fits through. This is your, this is your four, five, six clutch. Yeah, these aren't in too bad a shape, but well, you know that one's no good. So again, it's um, getting a banner kit. I didn't actually take this apart yet, but this has to go in order to put this the shaft on here. This has to go, and then this goes. Okay, then you have a little tiny snap ring on this side. Here's a washer also, washer and a bearing. You have a little tiny snap ring on this side, which looks like this. And it's a little bit of a pain to get out. You can't get plies in there or anything. You kind of got to get a sharp scribe and, and uh, um, you know, pick the thing out. And once this is in place, you know, this isn't going to come out. So you got to make sure this is in place. Okay, and here is your 3-5 reverse, uh, your wave steel. So the way this thing is going to come apart here is we're going to press down on this and we're going to take this snap ring out and, and slide everything out. You want to make sure this is good in here with no ring grooves. This is the rear stator here. You know, and that's going to go in here and put some new rings in. Those bed usually takes the shell out as well. Okay, typical final drive, you know, the belt housing. Uh, here is your planet set. Okay, this piece up here drives the one, two, three, four clutch. And then just your typical planet set. You know, you have uh, bearings and washers. Well, really just bearings. So you gotta watch where the bearings go. All right, a sun gear, another bearing. But if you pull like a uh, 6040 uh, diagram, you know, internals probably, probably pretty much be the, be the same. And then this goes on the very bottom. Okay, so just wanted to run through that quickly. That's the plan it's set. All right, now let me just bring the case in here. And then I want to show you guys a tool that I had made uh, to get these to get these apart here. It makes it nice and easy. Okay, here's the main case. This is the fill. And I believe you check it right through this bolt here uh, with it running in hot, of course. Okay. This little hole right here, let's see, where is it? Okay. Uh, this would be the input speed sensor. Okay. Right here, it goes here. Uh, the valve body's here. And this spot right here would be the output speed sensor which is this, that's on the inside. So if you get an output speed sensor code, you gotta remove the valve body, change that. This is what the inside looks like. Your 2.6 piston goes all the way in the back and then your stator will bolt and, and then you build it up from there. Okay, and I also wanted to mention about the linkage. 
this has of course the internal internal boat switch and it's held in with the roll pin. So there actually is a special tool to get the roll pin out. Don't don't bang the roll pin in thinking that it may have enough room because it's probably not going to clear. It's going to hit the case. So what I did to get the roll pin out and it came out fairly easy. You know, this is the this is the linkage. You know, thing. the linkage will go in. The mode switch will go over it. You know, inside, and then the roll pin will get knocked through. But what I did was I grabbed it with a vice grip, small vice grip, and then used my seal puller and pulled the pin out instead of trying to bang the pin in because I don't think that's going to work. I think it's going to hit the case, and then what do you do then? So the pin definitely has to be pulled out. All right, and then the valve body. You have, uh, uh, let me show you the, uh, the valve body. You got a couple of, let me show you this here first. You got to make sure your seals, your seals go here, and they're all in through like an individual, you know, individual seals. Seal it probably the different clutch packs. And the valve body seals. Seals are, are uh, yeah. body seals look like this. The feed the foe with the one, two, three, four clutch and the low reverse clutch. Okay, and also here, you know, you have your your oil baffles as well. You know, keeps the oil, I guess, to keep everything lubricated. This uh, is going to go when it's together, like that, you know, once everything is in. You also have another one here. And this one bolts like this. And it'll bolt just like that. The final drive will go here. So this is your, your case here. I just want to show you the valve body. Uh, I don't know, maybe T30 bolts. There's a lot of them. And that one stud that will stick it all the way through, that also holds the, the valve body in place. All right, here's your separator plate. And then the main valve body. Uh, that's what this looks like. This is basically solenoids. It does not have the PCM like, uh, like a 6T70. Uh, and when I got the, the uh, fax from Ford, because I figured this was all sold as one, it actually showed uh, the, I guess, the conductor here as one, and all individual sol solenoids. So I guess it's possible to get these separate. I honestly didn't think it was until I saw the picture. But um, you know, everything I got a price as a whole, everything together was about three hundred and fifty dollars. But. That's what probably the way I would go, you know, in doing one of these uh, anyway, unless you can, you know, unless you have uh, an electrical code and you know a solenoid is shorter. But this actually is my uh, first 6F35, you know, to tear down. Um, I was used to the uh, 60, 70, 60, 40s where you got to buy the whole thing as one. So again, they were, they were listed as in individual. So this is the valve body. All right, I just want to show you guys a quick tool. Uh, and I made, what did I do with it here? Okay, so this is a um, an old shell from like an E4OD, and cut the center out on each side. So when we put this on. Uh, for this one here, because this is what's the you know what's going to be a bit of an issue because you have 
you know, like a retainer also, you know, the snap ring sits inside here. So you can't just kind of pick the thing out. You have to push the thing down. You have to push the, the Belleville spring down. So we find the opening, you know, you set it right in there. I put it my foot press, press it down, it's perfect. Uh, be able to work the snap with snap ring pliers, couple of screwdrivers, get the thing right out, no problem. And if you ever get uh, confused on how this actually goes into the case, you can tell by these holes here off center. So you just look in the case and you see how the holes are uh, in the case, you know, because it has to match and then the feed pipe's going. But again, this is would go in just like this. This is the one, two, three, four side, so this is going to drop in. And just make sure your holes line up. Uh, so I think that's uh, that's about it. You know, on this pump here, I'm going to remove this ferrule. And what I'm going to do with this a this seal in here that I'm going to change because I believe uh, if there's any issues with this seal, uh, I believe it can cause a 741 code or some kind of you know convert slip code. So I'm going to change out that. But overall, you know, not that bad uh, to work on. Here are all my, uh, I'm still waiting for some parts, but, you know, here's all my pistons here. You know, this is the, uh, um, all of them. That are getting changed. And then I have my banner kit, and I'm waiting for the rest of the stuff. I don't have uh, my torque converter, I don't have my filter, the 3.5 uh, reverse wave steel. And I'm changing the steels on the one, two, three, four clutch, but here's my banner kit. Uh, and I think that's about it on this, uh, on this unit. Uh, 2013 Ford Fusion with the 6F35 front wheel drive only, not all wheel drive. Okay, just a couple things, a couple more things on the 6F35. Just wanted to go over something on the 26 clutch piston. Okay, this um, spring and this retainer right here has to be lined up with the piston. And what I mean by that are there are little cutouts here for this to sit in. So we're going to find the largest one, which is kind of like, you know, maybe like a master swine, and we'll put that in place, that will sit right in place, into the grooves. And then the same thing with this, we've got the large one here. Line it up, and put it down just like that. And then when you install it in the case, you got this right here. So this really can only go in one way. When you install it, that's going to go right in this section here. So you just got to, I believe it can only go in one way. I don't think it can go in any other way, but um, it's going to go in right here and everything will be anchored in place. So once that's in, you put your sack ring on and your 2.6 piston is installed. So I just want to go with that. Um, okay, now on this 3.5 reverse, uh, this snap ring, I don't want to take this apart again because this was a little difficult to put back together. This snap ring uh, actually, you know, that fits around in here actually is larger and you have to squeeze it together to fit it in. Okay, so I took a pair of needle nose pliers, squeezed it together and pulled the pre pressure plate up and it actually locks into the pressure plate between the drum and the pressure plate. So it's pretty steady now. You got a load of your clutches and steels, put your pressure plate in, it'll drop down a little bit, squeeze the snap ring, and pull the pressure plate up to lock it in place. And then, you gotta put your piston and stuff in. If you put your piston and stuff in first, you know, if you build the back of the drum first, there won't be enough room to put the snap ring in. You'll just have to take it apart because it's not dropping down low enough. See, there's just, there's not much clearance in here. It's good, but, uh, you won't be able to get the snap ring in. You won't have enough room. So I just wanted to uh, mention that as well. Okay, now we're going to move on to the pump. 
the pump actually is no good, so I have another one coming. All right, my supplier actually sells these, so that usually means it's probably going to be a common issue. Maybe to see these pumps go bad. These gears here are all scored up, and this thing it's a front wheel drive, and it probably took about a full day to pull out, so you can't. Uh, you know, take any chances here. So this pump here is all scored up. I'm looking at it, and the pocket here, a uh, piece of slag or something must have got in here. And in this section right here, uh, it's not smooth. It's very rough. So this pump is going to be replaced. I actually have one coming to show you. So that is an important uh, area to check. I'm sure it's just going to be. Uh, probably just the body and gears, and I may have to switch the valves over. And the other part to the pump is here. All right, so this is, there's nothing wrong with this. This is in, in nice shape. So I'm sure it's like a, it's a couple hundred dollars, uh, but I'm sure I'm just going to be getting the body and gears. Okay, so that is the pump. Now what I wanted to do, let's just go over this valve body. We're actually going to open the valve body. Okay, so first thing that's going to come off this uh, uh, is not held in with any bolts or anything. This is just, you know, one of your separator plates. So this we can just take it and put it aside. Okay, there's no uh, check balls or anything here. It's all on the inside. All right, so what we're going to do is flip this thing over. All right, the first thing we're going to take off is this, um, I guess they would call it maybe the conductor plate. You know, this is where all the um, solenoids plug into. Uh, solenoids plug into here, and you have a sensor, I guess, that plugs into here. So we're going to start by taking that off. These are, I think, are... T20 volts. And once this is off, there's something that I want to show you. And I believe it's what holds the solenoids in this pin, it's a series of pins. And once this is off, these, when you turn this thing upside down, they're all going to fall out. Okay, so we got everything more up. There's one more. Then we're going to lift this off. Okay. Put this here. All right, we're going to put this aside. All right, now, these solenoids here, what, I believe what holds these in, let me just show you how easy they can fall out. Uh, I guess they're not magnetic. I thought they were. Okay, so you know what? There you go. See how, how easy these can fall out. They're pretty, pretty thin, and if you lose them, uh, you know, I'm not sure how they're sold. Um, you want to be very careful if you uh, happen to turn this thing over to look at something, whatever. I mean, you just turn it over and boom, they, uh, look, they, they all just fell out. I want to take them out anyway because I got to clean this valve body up but you want to be very, very careful with that. All right, so let me just get rid of these. They're all the same. Most of these, don't want to lose anything. Let me just turn my light back on. 
Okay. I'm going to get my sock here. All right, so we got the pin. All right, so now we got a couple of eight millimeter bolts. So, there is, okay, so we're going to lift this off, because there is a, a couple of small screws that are holding the separator plate onto this section of the valve body, so we can just go ahead and lift this off. All right, you got a couple here that are holding this plate on. All right, and here. We have one, two, three check balls, and it looks like a maybe a damper. All right, so we're going to mark where they go. Let me just get my center punch here. All right, so we have one. Scribes to see if I can push that out. It's been an air, but it's not coming out. some kind of a valve, actually a valve and a spring. Could be like a, a pressure relief, uh, something maybe for the cooler, but that's what it is. Maybe even an accumulator, and that went right here. All right, so we're gonna move this aside. We're gonna flat in that. All right, so let's take these, put these aside. All right, now we're going to open this one. I don't know if I had mentioned before or not, but again, this resembles a 6045, which I've done, but a 6F35. Um, this actually is my first one. Okay. one, two, three, four of them. And, you know, the springs may be different, uh, springs may be different uh, tensions, because this one looks like it's sitting a little lower than all the others, so I guess you really want to be careful on where these go. So we got one. Check balls here.
these things as they come out and then kind of compare them to see. Let me just hold this one in and we'll get these two out. Okay. kind of resembles uh, what's in like a ZF6HP26. All right, so everything is out of the valve body. The valve body is all apart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flat sand these. I'm going to clean them up. And we'll be back. I'll be back to put this valve body back together. All right, so I will be back uh, in just a few minutes. All right, so I got this all clean. Um, all the valves are free. I checked everything. And now what we're gonna do is just uh, put this back together. So we're gonna start with uh, this section with the valves and the damper. Okay, so I got these things laid out as they came out. So we're gonna put these in one at a time. steel check balls one two and three and then another valve and spring okay all right so your three check balls one is here 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 and the valve Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this, flip it over, and put it on top.
Now we're going to put all our pins in. Then we put the, uh, uh, I guess this conductor plate back on. And then the valve might be done. Okay, so let's get some pins here. Got to make sure they go all the way down. Okay. Go. You may have to give the solenoid a little twist or something, you know, if they're going down a little tight. That one is up there, it's down now. Okay. okay. Very good. A couple more. I want to be careful not to drop them. Down all the way. Okay. Okay. We'll pull down. Now we're going to plug this back in, put the bolts in. Now our body is done. Actually, it looks like it's off a little bit. Let's take this back up again. Slightly, slightly open the bolts when I'm going in. Last one. And we'll tighten it down. Uh, also on the Sonics website, there are uh, there is stuff available for this. They have a zip kit, they have some oversized valves, and they also have um, uh, O-ringed. Uh, you know, you take the stock route and there's a bore plug. And I guess what uh, maybe they're saying is, uh, you know, the bore plugs may leak, so they actually sell O-ringed bore plugs. Uh, I did not ask for those, you know, I don't know if my supplier has them, but there uh, is some stuff available uh, through uh, Sonics, you know, if you like um, using zip kits and, and, and the board plugs and stuff like that, I mean, it certainly can't hurt. Okay. And then we've got this, which when this goes back together, this will go on. There are two, there are dowels in here, so when we put this back together, 
Okay, this will go on. Oops, sorry, that's wrong. This will go on here, and then the valve body will go in. All right, so this is the valve body complete, all ready to go. All right, so I guess that is all for this 6F35 highlight video. Um, again, I couldn't, um, I had to get this thing down because we had to get our, our uh, figures together and we didn't know if the insurance company was gonna come on and look at this, but everything worked out. And I just gotta get this thing back together and get it back to the guy because uh, I'm not even sure that they gave him a rental. Uh, so I think that's about it for this video. I uh, thank you guys for watching and you guys have a great day. We'll see you next one. And so real quick, the uh, pump just got here that I thought was just going to be the body and gears, but it is the entire pump assembly. Everything is brand new. So we're going to pop this, put the filter on, and pop this right into the bell housing. So here I thought we were just going to get the body and gears, but the whole pump assembly uh, showed up and it is actually a OB Ford part. So just wanted to share that with you guys once again.